when you first launch the SQL Sentry client, you're greeted by the start page that gives you an overview across your entire environment, regardless how many servers you're monitoring, be it physical, virtual, in the cloud, and hybrid environments. Out of the box, SQL Sentry provides roughly 200 different conditions that we can watch for, for common issues such as long running queries, blocks, deadlocks, high CPU utilization, low storage space, in addition to more complicated conditions that use and or logic to correlate multiple metrics along with even uh, query results. You also have the option to create your own conditions in addition to the ones that are provided out of the box with SQL Sentry. Regardless, the start page will always show you the most recent conditions that were detected, so you always know if there's anything that requires your immediate attention. Alternately, if you already know of an issue you want to investigate, you can find the server you're interested in in the Navigator pane and jump right into it by selecting Open the Performance Analysis Dashboard. When I first launch the Performance Analysis Dashboard for a server, I get essentially a real-time view of all my most pertinent performance metrics. Uh, this by default will show me a rolling last 30 minutes, and most of these metrics are with 10 second granularity. So as close as you can really get to real-time visibility without putting any undue overhead on your monitored servers. Now there's a lot of metrics here, but uh, there's a pretty logical layout to the dashboard. You have your Windows level metrics on the left-hand side, network, CPU, memory, disk, and your SQL server details on the right-hand side, such as batches, transactions per second, server level weight statistics, how SQL Server is using its memory for the various buffer and plan caches, down to the I.O. level, measuring latency uh, for individual volumes, as well as on the SQL Server side, down to the individual database files themselves. Now, in addition to the live view, I can always go back and take a look at history. If there's this particular issue that I want to investigate that I believe started in the past, I can select whatever start and end date times that I'd like and jump right to that point in history to investigate those issues. Either recent issues that I'm investigating, I also have the option to do long-term trending. I can bring up the last month or, or even year or more if I've been monitoring the server for that long to observe long-term trends and view baselines of, of my server's performance. Uh, just as easily as jumping to a specific recent time frame to look for the root cause of a specific issue. Regardless of where I am, if I see something interesting where somebody reported a performance issue on the server, I'm likely to see a correlating spike on one of these metrics indicating high resource utilization. For example, down here, I have some heavy write latency that I, I notice on this particular server um, for a few minutes ago. Drag and drop allows me to highlight that time frame on the dashboard here. And you'll notice that same time frame is correlated across every chart here. So I can easily see the relationship between all my metrics to get a complete view of this workload profile in a single pane of glass. Uh, the most often next step here for basic troubleshooting methodology is to use the jump to menu where I can jump into alternate views, staying focused on the time frame that I just selected here. The most common being top SQL, where I want to just take a look and see, well, what were the, the highest impact queries that were actually running against my server at that time that I've selected? From there, I can drill down and, and perform query tuning and analysis and other options that we'll investigate in other videos.